Thank you. I think we're going to fix this. We'll get started and fix it here in a minute. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, um, Mutu Kamar uh, Kalipatan, and he is uh, collaborating with um, Dr. Uh, Vadim Gulians at the University of Cincinnati in the Department of uh, Chemical, uh, Chemical Engineering. And um, he received his um, training at uh, his MS degree at, uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to say this right, but that's <laughs> there you go, in India, and uh, his PhD um, in Ireland at Tisdall uh, National Institute, um, and uh, uh, then he pursued his postdoctoral uh, training at the University of Cincinnati with Dr. Uh, Gullians. Um, his field of expertise is in computational chemistry, and it's our pleasure to um, uh, receive a presentation on the um, density functional theory investigation of propane aboxygenation over moly vanadium tellurium vanadium oxygen catalyst and some insights into carbon and hydrogen uh, bond activation. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for the introduction. So, good morning everybody. And I'm going to talk about the theoretical investigation of uh, propane aboxygenation reaction on the surface of uh, molybdenum of vanadium tellurium niobium oxide catalyst. Since the name is too long, I'm going to call this catalyst as a catalyst. So whenever I call this a catalyst, you can uh, say that I'm referring to this catalyst. <laughs> so this work is done at uh, Department of Chemical and Materials Engineering, and we know that this is not a, in collaboration with uh, Dr. Ye. Um, Dr. Ye at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee. So uh, uh, this, talk is, uh, this talk also focuses on one of the aspects of heterogeneous catalyst reaction, uh, which is more important nowadays. Uh, as it produces almost a quarter of all organic chemicals produced worldwide, and is vital for the importance of modern economy. What I'm going to speak now is about the amoxidation reaction on the surface of this catalyst. So what is amoxidation reaction? So amoxidation is a reaction in which mixture of propane, ammonia, and oxygen in the presence of catalyst gets converted into a nitrate. So this is a simple reaction where the propane gets converted into a kilonitrile in the presence of oxygen, ammonia, and this catalyst. This reaction has gained much importance because it involves a less uh, cost-effective propane instead of propane, and um, it's also one of the environmental-friendly reaction forced to produce a kilonitrile. So initially, I talk few aspects of the structure of this catalyst. I mean, structural aspects of this catalyst and uh, explain how we are going to deal with uh, deal using uh, quantum mechanics to explain this reaction. So, this catalyst is discovered in 1995 by Mitsubishi uh, Chemical Company and it has been formed to possess the unique ability to transform propane into its partial oxidation products, maybe the acrylonite. This catalyst has found to possess two dominant two phases out of which the dominant phase M1 is, has been found to, found, to be, uh, found to have selectivity and activation of propane. It is responsible for catalytic activity and selectivity to acrylonitrite, while the M2 phase is not directly involved in the propane amoxidation reaction, but it has found to uh, in increase the selectivity of the reaction when it's present in when it is present together with the amount phase. So this catalyst <coughs> has a complicated, strict, uh, complicated crystal structure in the sense that many of its sites have a partial or a mixed 
which I'm going to explain in the next slide. Yeah. Uh, this is the crystal structure of the catalyst here. And uh, <coughs> there are a variety of, I mean, the crystal structure has been studied by a variety of techniques like STM and the powder or neutral diffraction methods. And they found, and they came to a conclusion that it has an orthorhombic VA to space loop with a lattice constant of 21. Uh, 1.17, 26.67, and C value of 4.01. The crystal structure of this catalyst has 13 distinct lattice positions, out of which 11 are framework sites, which are mentioned here in this figure with the label number, um, and they are occupied by either vanadium, molybdenum, and niobium. And there are two non-framework sites, which are the hollow channels formed by the seven-member ring here and the six-member ring here, and they are found to be occupied by the genuine. Vanadium of the framework size, of the 11 framework size, vanadium has found to occupy the four framework size and exhibits a fractional occupancy together with molybdenum. This is the one of the complicated problems that exists with this, uh, in the crystal structure of this kind of catalyst. And experimental, uh, I mean, experiments has also proposed that the oxidation state of vanadium in the surface of the catalyst is either vanadium 4 plus or 5 plus, while molybdenum is in the oxidation state of plus 5 or plus 6, while then Niobium is niobium has plus five and tellurium has plus four state. I mean, the experimental studies has also focused. I mean, they have also proposed that only this part of the. I mean, this is the active site of the catalyst. So, um, I mean, this is the active site of the catalyst that is responsible for the conversion of propane to octane and there are also some experimental studies that explain the role of each element on the surface of the catalyst for the propane amoxidation reaction. For example, there are four main important steps in the reaction. So the first one is the conversion of propane to propane, leading to the formation of um, propane, leading to the formation of propane. And the second one is the formation of allylic intermediate, followed by oxygen and night ammonia activation on the surface of the catalyst. These four steps have been taken care of the molybdenum, vanadium, and, and tellurium uh, present in the system, while niobium uh, takes care of the separation of the active site and stabilizes the structure. So in order to understand the mechanism of the reaction on the surface of the catalyst, we needed to understand the role of, I mean, we needed to understand the um, more information about the preliminary steps that's happening on the surface when propane interacts with the surface of this catalyst. And that's the major reason that we need to use uh, density function theory for this study. So why do we need theoretical investigation? So the first one is, I mean, we need theoretical studies to, to explore the potential reactivity of the different catalytic site of uh, molybdenum, vanadium, tellurium, neumium oxide catalyst. And also we need a molecular level information that connects the structure and composition of the surface to the elementary steps. Also, we need to find the crucial information about the mechanism of propane amoxidation on the surface of this catalyst. There are some theoretical studies reported using the force field techniques. I mean, uh, uh, so, uh, reactive force field is one of the force field that has been used to do study the. Uh, study the uh, such kind of reactions on different catalysts. For example, they have they are cap they are proved to be capable of reproducing the energy surface structure and various from the accurate quantum mechanical calculation for various system. So similar kind of uh, reacts F of force field have also been applied for our structure, our catalyst here. Um, and they come to a conclusion re uh, regarding the partial occupancy at M1, M2, M3, and M7 site. And they have also come to a conclusion about the oxidation state of molybdenum and vanadium, where molybdenum has found to possess plus 6, and vanadium prefers to be reduced to plus 4. But when you look at the structure here, uh, this is the experimental one, and this is the structure obtained by optimizing the structure using the axial of phosphate. But you find a strong dislocation in the a strong uh, dislocation in the framework here, uh, comparing to the experimental structure. But this mm, similarly, we have also applied the gun phosphate uh, to check the uh, structure of the. 
catalyst. And what you find, it, what we observe is you stay here, where you also find the storm peaks, dislocation on the frame of sites. For example, uh, the structure is almost collapsed on using the force field techniques. So force field techniques is the best one, I mean, it's the cheapest one, and it's very easy to carry out uh, comparing to quantum mechanical calculation. So as a first step, they have used force field techniques. But the next step is, you, is to use the quantum mechanical calculation. Uh, quantum mechanical calculation is always expensive and it's uh, time consuming. So uh, we use a strategy called, um, we use um, uh, using a cluster model approximation where we construct a suitable cluster model to represent the, to represent the active site of the catalyst and conduct the reaction mechanism on the cluster models. So in the next slide, I am going to explain how we selected the cluster. So experiments have confirmed that uh, the active site of the catalyst corresponds to this position of the initial. We did consider the whole unit cell for our computation because uh, it has more than 100 atoms in the unit cell and it's computationally expensive to carry out uh, calculations on such kind of huge system. So this is our uh, this is our cluster model. Uh, and the elements are located here. Uh, the reason why we use a cluster model is that the, the, the easiest way to explain is that it's computationally efficient. Similar kind of cluster model studies have also been reported for reactions on the bismuth and molybdenum oxide catalyst. So but this cluster model comp computations are really accurate when used properly, but it can also give problems when we didn't validate the system. So we use computational methods uh, by using the following methodology where we use um, a periodic density functional theory implemented in a piano of initial simulation package. This is one of the most uh, most well-known package among the uh, people who work on the heterogeneous catalysis. And we use a GG approximation, which is a generalized gradient approximation with a PVEH and correlation functional and PAW pseudo-referential. For all the calculations listed here, we have used speed polarized calculations. That means we did both alpha and spin electrons differently, and uh, we conducted studies uh, with a differing number of uh, layers. For example, we study from one to five layers, and each cluster is separated from its other periodic image by lava constant. So this is the cluster model, and for the simplicity, we uh, replace the molecule which extends to this place with the hydrogen and freeze the hydrogen atom so that we get easy convergence. We begin by exploring the electronic and energetic properties of the cluster with the one to five layers by studying the energetic and electronic properties for, for one to five layers as a function of cluster thickness. And what we found is that upon adding, um, see, uh, this is the, uh, I mean, this is the energy obtained by adding one layer of uh, AB plane to the one layer of the cluster. And we found that, uh, that when we form a two layer cluster, the energy is exothermic by minus 0.96 AB and gets converged to minus 1 AB. So, uh, this, I mean, when you have three layers, it's, um, it accurately, I mean, the energy, the changing energy gets converged. Similarly, we also check the uh, initial uh, products of the first step, for example, uh, when you activate the propane, you get isopropyl and hydrogen. Uh, so we check the uh, changing energy with respect to the number of layers. Um, uh, and we found that when you have uh, three layers, when you have three layers, all the, the, all the energy layers almost gets converged. For example, this, this layer, which is the isopropyl or tellurium oxo, and this one, hydrogen or tellurium oxo, Needs five layer to get the you know, to get the properties converge. But as you can see, when you use the three layer, majority of the changes were addressed here. And we also found that there exists interplane interplane interaction between the two layers of the UV plane. So we based on this study, we conclude that one to three layer of the UV plane is necessary for one to three layer is necessary for the numerical convert. Sufficient for the qualitative result, and you need to use a uh, five layer cluster for the numerical convergence. But these calculations are really uh, time consuming, and uh, so we, uh, we use only one to three layer, I mean, we use only the three layer cluster for our calculations and um, check the results with the five layer cluster. 
And uh, I have also told that uh, we use the PAW, sort of financial, uh, you know, uh, we use DGA functional for, the, uh, for studying the mechanism of the reaction. We also test the accuracy of the reaction using hybrid, hybrid functional, uh, which is HSE-OC implemented in BASP. So uh, we just checked with one of the system, uh, by the, like hydrogen or tellurium, using HSE-O6 functional, and we found a similar kind of uh, trend uh, when using HSE-O6 functional, making the metabolisms are accurate. So we also computed the oxidation state on the surface of the catalyst by using weighted charges implemented in bias. So as you can see, uh, the oxidation state of vanadium also gets converged at the three layers, and the changes are very much uh, uh, the changes are very converged for the four and five layers as well. And uh, we compare, as an example, we compare the oxidation state of vanadium using um, vanadium oxide and vanadium pentoxide, and we found that the the charge resembles. I mean, the charge at the three layer resembles more close to that of average a charge of vanadium calculated on the vanadium dioxide and vanadium pentoxide, and therefore we propose that the oxidation state of vanadium on the surface of the molybdenum of vanadium tellurium neodymium oxide catalyst is plus four. So um, we also examine the um, binding energy of uh, propane isopropyl hydrogen on various adsorption site, and we found that the adsorption of propane is site insensitive on the surface of the catalyst, while isopropyl and hydrogen is strongly independent too. For example, uh, the isopropyl here prefers to bind with tellurium oxo more than vanadium oxo and the bridging oxygen and the bad tempo, and we find that essentially the same trend with hydrogen, but one difference is that here, the hydrogen when bonded to the vanadium oxo during geometry optimization moved simultaneously to the tellurium oxo, indicating that it prefers to bind with tellurium oxo rather than vanadium oxo, which comes to a conclusion that the vanadium, I mean the tellurium oxo is responsible also for the abstraction of hydrogen from the propane and not only from propane and propane as previously posted by experimental groups. So, uh, we have also, based on the um, product states obtained from various other catalysts, check the various possibilities of product state on the surface of this catalyst. We have considered eight possibilities, for example, starting from uh, propane entering into the, the gas phase radical onto the surface of the catalyst, and then uh, uh, web isopropyl location on tellurium oxo and hydrogen location on uh, tellurium oxo, and then the interchange and the reverse of this one and also on the bridging oxygen and also on the tellurium oxo and what we find essentially is that the product states six and seven where the isopropyl are locating on the vanadium oxo and hydrogen locating on the tellurium oxo and the reverse is more stable than any other species considered and we try to concentrate on these two species to examine the barrier for the reaction to get these two states to be more specific or to be more simple, we have explained the reason. I mean, we have uh, identified the two possible product states for the initial step of the propane of um, oxidation on the surface of the molybdenum vanadium tellurium oxide catalyst, and uh, we identified two possible product states. Uh, in the product state one, the propyl ion gets located on the vanadium oxo and the hydrogen located on the tellurium oxo, and it's reverse in the next state. So uh, we, are, we are running the calculation, I mean the calculation that helps us to estimate the activation failure for these two reactions are still ongoing. So to summarize, uh, we have studied the uh, uh, molybdenum vanadium tellurium neodymium oxide catalyst by constructing a suitable cluster model and we have found that it's, um, we need at least three layers to get the uh, quality, at least the good results. And uh, what we found from this uh, complication is that the propane absorption on the surface of the catalyst is slight insensitive, while isopropyl and hydrogen both display the same overall absorption, same preference, and the hydrogen doesn't like to bind out to the surface of vanadium oxo, but it's spontaneously moved to the tellurium oxo. And the oxidation state of vanadium is plus four. Um, and uh, the other investigation, or uh, I mean, the other steps of the investigation, uh, or other investigation, uh, will be processed. So finally, I thank all my 
um, collaborators, Dr. A. E. and uh, from Oak Ridge National Laboratory, and the funding from our uh, Department of Energy, and also the NASA uh, Computing Center and Ohio Super Computing Center and TerraGrid for the computational facilities by the Amber Corporation. So,